Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to learn about new Microsoft List form experience. So in Microsoft List, now you can create a form in quick click through steps and then you can send that form to any other user in your organization without enabling their access to the Microsoft List. So we'll learn all about this and we, I'm going to also show you how you can enable the added functionality after the user is going to submit the information using those form. So once the user submit the information, by default they won't get any access, they cannot even make any changes to the form that they have submitted. So in this video we will learn that and also how you can enable the added permissions. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So the first thing first, uh, we need to log into the Microsoft list. So I logged into my office.com and I can see the list. So I click onto the list app and this is going to take me to my list experience. Here I can see all of the different lists that I have created. What I can do from here, I can either create a new list or I can start working on, on one of the existing lists that I already have. So for this video, we're going to create a new list. Okay. So I'm going to click on new list. Here you have multiple options. You can select from multiple templates that has my, that Microsoft has already provided. If there's any template available from your organization, you can use it. You can always start from the blank list, from an existing list, Excel, CSV. So there are multiple options that you can use. Here I'm going to use an existing template, Issue Tracker. What we are trying to build, I'm trying to build an Issue Tracker form uh, that any user in my organization can use to submit the issue. By default, I'm not going to give them any access to the actual issue tracker site where I'm tracking all these issues. But once the user submit that ticket or submit that issue, only that they will get access to the ticket that they have submitted. And we're going to use the Microsoft list new form features with that. So I'm going to pick the issue tracker, click use template. Okay, we're going to give a name. And once you create a list, of course, you will get all the options here. These are the different team sites that you have created in your organization or you have access on. So I already have this help text team site created. So this is my help text team site where I'm going to create that list or form experience. Okay, so I'm going to select that, click create. And what this is going to do, this is going to create a Microsoft list for me. As you can see, the list has been created. It's going to have all the columns from the template. One thing that you will notice now on the navigation, the top navigation, I'm seeing a link called form. And this is where I can create a form for this list without extending or enabling any permission on this list or on the SharePoint site. Okay. Once I click on the form, it's going to show me a form. This is where I can uh, create a new form. If I have already created the form, they will show up here. So I'm going to click on the new form. And this is very simple approach now. As soon as I clicked on the new form, the form is already there. It has already have all the columns, those were available in my list. I can also add any of this new field that you are seeing here. So I can create a new, new column directly when I'm creating the form. Okay. And also I can select which column I need to get information from the user. So for example, here I don't want them to provide me a sign to. So I can remove it. So this particular column will not show up on the form. Very simple. This is where you can give the name and also you can provide description here. And this is going to auto save. So you don't have any save button here. The moment you start making changes, the change will be automatically saved. Other than the field, I already have option to use any of the existing theme. And themes is nothing but the background of this form or I can also create my own style if I want to. And the last option that you can customize or configure here is the message. Once the user is going to submit this form, they will receive this message, right? So my form is getting saved. I can also click on preview. This is going to give me a preview of the form, how the form is going to look like. As you can see, everything is working perfectly fine. And once I click on the send form, this is the link that I'm going to get. This link is easily available without any permission to any of the user in your organization. 
So if you send this list, they can actually open this form and send the information back to you. And that information will be saved back to this particular list. So I'm going to copy this link. You can close it. And if I go again to the form here, you can see our form is already created, right? I can also create new form if I want to. And I can also edit the existing form, stop accepting response. If I select stop accepting response on this particular form, even if the user has this link to this form, they won't be able to submit any response. I can duplicate it and I can remove it completely. So we have a few of the options that you can use to customize and create new forms for this particular list. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that link logged in as another user and then try to access the form and submit the form to this list. So I logged in as a demo user, as you can see in my environment. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to paste the link that we copied for the form. And here you go. So the form is opening exactly how it was there. Now, if I try to open the website, uh, the, the help desk website that I have, this user doesn't have any access on this one, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to submit a new issue here. Okay. So simple information, whatever this form was asking me, I provided as, an, as a demo user. I click submit. And as you can see, this message has changed. As you remember, we have changed the message. So now it's saying thank you for reporting the issue. It's saying thank you. The form is submitted successfully. If I refresh again, still I don't have any access. If I go back to my list, you can see the one item has been created by demo user here, right? Now, the thing is this, at this point, everything is good and it's going to work. So if you don't have any, any further need for extending any permissions for the user who submitted this request and the user doesn't have any need to make changes to the, some, to the information that they have submitted, this works perfectly fine. I can still go back. I can go to the forms and create, start creating more form. I can stop accepting the response if I want to. So this is a, a, a course ongoing functionality you can keep using it but let's think about in some scenario let's say the user submitted this request what i want to do as soon as the user submit the request or the status has changed i want the user should be able to access this so they can make the necessary changes if needed okay so if you have such requirement where you also want to enable the edit functionality after the user submit the request let's see how you can do it so what i'm going to do i'm going to log into my Power Automate, okay? And what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a flow on the item create, okay? So whenever the item is created, I'm gonna enable the permission for the user who has submitted that request. So they will get the permission on this particular list, okay? So I'm gonna create a new flow. It should be automated. When an item is created, okay? I'm gonna select my site address, help text demo and issue tracker demo one that's the list name right so what we need to do when the item is created in between this of course you are free to add any logic you can add an approval process and whatever you want to do here i'm just going to search for sharepoint okay and then we're going to use grant access to an item or the folder okay here again i need to select the site address list name and everything so help text demo my list ID, this is going to be the ID when item is created. Recipient, select the recipient, click on add dynamic content. And this is where I'm going to use the issue locked by email. This is what we are seeing on the form, the user who is actually reporting that issue. And then you have the role, what permission we are giving them. I'm giving them edit. You can also restrict to the view if you want to. Okay, and then also notify the recipient. So recipient will get a message that here is the link for your ticket that you just created. Okay, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Click done, save. Now, if I'm going to submit another request, the user will get access to the, to the form that they have submitted and they can make changes to it. Before you test, there is one more change that you should do it. So go back to your list, go to the settings, Okay, go to the advanced settings and in here item level permission, make sure that you change some settings here. 
So read access, read item that were created by the user and edit item is also created by the user. So what this change will do, I will only able to see the item that I created. I will only able to edit the item that I created. Very important setting. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to submit another issue here, laptop issue and some other detail here. Click submit. Now what will happen? Now things going to be a little different. The item got created, right? As you can see here, our flow in the background now is going to trigger and it's going to actually update the permissions so that this user will be able to see the item that he just created and also will be able to make changes as needed. So as you can see, so the flow completed successfully. Now if I go back to my user and log into the Outlook, because you remember we have also enabled the email or notify user and I can see I got an email here that's saying that I'm trying to share this laptop issue. Now if I click open, it's going to take me to the list. I can see the item that I created and from here now I can make changes to my request, right? So perfectly working. The form is working. I can still go ahead and submit any more request. But overall, this is what I want to show you in this video. So the new form functionality that you have, what this functionality is bringing in. Okay. I hope this will help. Thank you very much for watching.